you know, I was asked to, uh, you know, to do this, and it's like, what do, what do I talk about? Why do you have a photographer? Talk about photography. You know what? I don't want to do that. And the reason being is because I've had this book hanging around for about 10 years, and every so often I look at it, and every time I look at it, I learn something new about this town and how great it was back then and how great it is today. And what I find interesting is that it's not just about the buildings, uh, it's not the, the area, it's also the people. The people that you're going to see in here, uh, how they're dressed, uh, how they look uh, serious, you know, uh, smiling. Uh, the things that they came up with uh, to make this town really flourish and to be where it is today. But also, to me, it kind of leaves a lot of questions. Like, one is, well, what happened to this? Or what happened to that? And why is it gone? And you know what I mean? So again, this is from the centennial celebration dating back to 1953. So I hope that you enjoy it. I want participation. Mr. Parker, uh, I already told him, I said, you, 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 know, you weren't back then here, but I'm pretty sure that you probably know some of these people back in the 20s. <laughs> so speak up. And if you know anything about what you're going to see, please speak up because I really want you to participate. I want hopefully to you know come up with some memories that you probably forgot about about this town. And there you are, you know, recording it, and maybe people will learn from you also. I know I will. So let's start. Okay. And let me see what I'm doing here. What up, glasses? Forget it, right? Right. <laughs> All right, so welcome to the Centennial Celebration back in 1953 in the town of North Reading. <coughs> now, this is the map that's actually in the front of the cover. And I figured I'd start with this because it's interesting to see some of the streets. And also they used it as a program. Now, I find this fascinating because it's got a little bit of everything, but a, little, a lot of less than what you'd expect, you know, back then. This is today's map. I mean, it's pretty amazing how far we've gone from this to this. Now what I did was I sandwiched them together and you can actually see a lot of the new streets that have been added and that were never there. I mean, the pond is still there. Yep, you're there. You know, we've actually kind of grown and we keep on growing. Of course, established in 1853, I guess that's when we separated from uh, Reading, am I correct? Yeah. Now, why, why, does anybody know why they did that? Because the people were tired of going to Reading for all their services in the winter, especially, you know, when their roads weren't good, and they wanted to have their own parish, okay. their own. So they separated. It took a while, but at least it happened. Mm -hmm. right. And when we did that, we inherited many things. We inherited the poor farm which is on Looney Hill. And I was at a meeting like this and I said, is it called Looney Hill because of the loons on the pond? And they said, no, it's because of the people that live at the poor farm. They were lo Looney Tunes. <laughs> what year was that? Well, in um, what year did they, that wasn't, in 53, it was back in, well, it could have been in 53. No, it was before that because, anyway. And this is from up in here. I took this photo uh, just before Christmas. I believe it was our very first snowstorm of uh, 2017. Okay. And that was used in my drone. And, you know, you look at this, and, and unfortunately I haven't found a photo showing this type of uh, view, but I'm pretty sure. That particular tree, the big one, yeah. 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 that was, what, how old is that, that tree? It's over 300 years. Over 300 years, and it's still there, and it's still awesome, and it's still beautiful, and it's, it seems like it keeps on growing and expanding every year. Well, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I love 
looking at these photos. These are the uh, photos of the uh, Board of Appeals mm -hmm. back then. And look at the way they're dressed. I love the ties. Yeah. Anybody remember any of these guys? No. What? I can't make up the name. Uh, Board of Appeals, Quentin Curley, mm -hmm. Chairman Frederick B. Blanchard, and Richard F. Allen. Richard what? Alan. Alan. Oh, Alan. No, I know, but Tommy does. I do. I'm not sure I do. I remember those guys. <laughs> All right, let's go to these guys. The planning board. You know, look at some of them are serious. Some of them. Look at the glasses. I, I, I just love you know looking at these guys. Look at the ties. You know. Yeah, because the man at the end is that Charlie Stajudi. Uh, that's uh, the end. Let me see. Leslie S. Smith. Oh, oh. Uh, Chester M. Smith, Chairman Robert E. Ham, Chandler S. E. S. Eaton, Joseph F. King, and oh, not present, Arthur E. Waddell, and Robert A. Scott, and Leslie Smith. So the, the gentleman at the end is uh, Mr. King. And Robert Ham is uh, the father of Dick and David Ham, uh, Dick and uh, Richard Ham. That would be Dave Ham's father. And Chandler Eaton was still on the board when I moved here in 50, you know, 65. Chandler Eaton or Sidney? Chandler Eaton. The board of assessors. How about that no. climate? Well, they might have been distant cousins. Cousins. Yeah, very distant cousins. <clears throat> uh, Clarence E. Wedge, Chairman Albert E. Slade, and Leslie G. Yule. Yule. Yeah. Anybody remember these guys? Yeah, Mr. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Wedge was a uh, one of the local uh, contractors and was famous because he owned a bulldozer, which very few contractors in North Reading owned. And so the bulldozer man. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, and who was the other person you said? Uh, in the middle, his wife was in real Slade. Slade. Yes, Slade. Uh, yes. Mrs. Was Slade was the, was the town's relative. There were only there were only a couple relatives in town, and most of them were what is known as kitchen relatives. They operated out, literally operated out of their kitchen. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Slade Con and Connie Lavers were the two ladies who kind of were the principal relatives in town for residences. Yeah. Now, what was the population back in 1953? Anybody remember? So what are we, 14 now? So it actually has a little. What's his name, Al? Uh, this John of a Washburn well, one of the wells for the town drinking water. That's named after him, I think. I remember it forever. And this is uh, William Sullivan, 1934 to 1953. He was the town clerk. But he's having a little guy there with a the, you know tie, and this is how I was elected <laughs> official. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> now we all know why they dressed like that, right? <laughs> Who ended up winning that anyway? The school, school committee. committee. School committee. Okay. Well. That's because they had the guy in the Bermuda shorts. Um, now this is our police department, and I get a kick out of you know the uniforms, of course, but I also get a kick out of the group photo. In particular, you've got all these husky guys. And there's this little guy in the back, in the front here, like Bonnie. <laughs> you know, and it's like, you wonder, how could he still be in the department at that age? <laughs> That's what our police department looks like today. I don't have any pictures of it back then, but no. it definitely wasn't. It. Was it in the same location? No, it no. was. No. Uh, it was in a corner of the uh, the town hall, which of yeah. course is now the library. Yeah, and yeah. it was library. in one corner of the building. Really? Okay. Everything so was in there. The administration, yeah. school committee, everybody was in there. Okay. And the jail. And the jail. Yeah. And the jail. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I love these antique cars. You know, they, they actually oh had, my goodness, look at that. these were state-of-the-art yeah, back then. So this is this is what they drive, luxury right now. You go in there, have you ever been or even looked inside one of these cruisers compared to what it was back then? They've got computers. They can look you up in a matter of seconds. 
And before they even stop you, they know who you are and what you weighed the day before. <laughs> now this is the fire department. I get a kick out of this because they've got over 20, what, 20, almost 30 people on, in the fire department, the top uh, photo. Our fire department, if I'm correct, today is 22 men. Not much more. Volunteer. Yeah. So why do they have so many back then with less buildings and they have few today? Volunteers. Well, volunteers. 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 Yeah, volunteers. Yeah, still, you know, that's a lot of men for, you know. Well, well that's my right too, so. But I get a kick out of the pumper there. That, that, that is a pumper, right? You see, volunteers for the, yeah, they were all volunteers more or less, except for the chief, am I correct? The chief was uh, unpaid. Probably, yeah. yeah who, does it say who the chief was? Yeah. Was it Ralph Sweetland then? It says it at the top. Uh, Chief uh, Burton. Oh yeah. Case Simmons. So he was the chief from 1895 to 1925, if I'm correct. Hmm. That was before my time. And here is our group today. That's a nice picture. And. There's the uh, old fire station. Now, that's also in the same location, am I correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. <laughs> and, of course, the old fire engine. That's what they would deal with today. Mm. And again, you know, they have GPS in those trucks. They can find a street like there's no tomorrow. But you can't find, you know where every street in town is. Mm. But the communication is incredible. That's water. That's the that's actually one of the new ones that they just got recently, am I yeah, correct? That's the new one. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows? <laughs> Last year, I think it was. And here's the old fire station. If you really look at it, it really hasn't changed that much, has it? No. Here's the old ambulance in 1953. Yeah. <laughs> and here's today's. No. no. It was painted blue. Yeah. Now, I was actually kind of glad to see this, the Department of Public Works. They really never get that, that much recognition. So I was really glad to see a picture, you know, in there. And look at the old DPW trucks and mm -hmm. tractors and so right. forth. Now, you, I took a picture of uh, the new one recently. You yeah. Look at the difference. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they, they do it's have recent cars and trucks, but it's full of snow, too. <laughs> Now, I get a kick out of this. Now, over here it says the Reverend G, John G. Hogan was the first pastor. Reverend John J. Lane succeeded Father Hogan on January 31st, 1949 in his present pastor. And this is St. Teresa's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look at how small that church was. No, it was a summer church. You know, no, it was a church for uh, for the town, the Catholic Church for the town, but in the summer it was an overflow crowd because a lot of people vacationed and were at their summer cottages on Martin's Pond. Yep. Well, but the overflow, we had to go to church in the town no. hall. Really? Yep. Yeah. Um, for the library. One morning I was driving to church, I lived on Central Street, and I was driving to church at the town hall and a horse ran across my path. Yeah. <laughs> the horse got away from someplace. Well, this is uh, where they live now, yeah. compared to that little, but yeah. So it's actually very impressive that and they the, had that. Yeah, the rectory, that. the rectory is where Abbot Chu is today. Yeah. Right. Look at it today. It really, if you really look at it, it really hasn't the changed that much, sweet, has it? But she was yeah. today. <laughs> and of course, you have the beautiful church here. Compared to. That was what was built, I think, 58. Yeah. The new St. Teresa's was built under Cardinal Cushing. And of course, you go from a reverend to a bishop. 
<laughs> I mean, who'd imagine an opera would have a bishop? I mean, that, that's actually pretty flattering if you really ask me. I mean, we've got a great Catholic church, and now we've got a great bishop that's actually kind of young, and he's got great ideas. So. He's also an attorney. Uh, really? Yeah. 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 Um, he's the church's attorney. So the Vatican is a key. Now, this is the Trinity uh, Church on Havel Street. Yeah. I'm fascinated by the way it looks. And if you look at this photo taken today, look at the difference. It's really not that much other than the expansion that they you know, added on on both sides. But look at the front of it. I mean, look at the top steeple. It's still there. It's almost like identical. It hasn't really changed that much. Yeah. 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 Yep. At the Union Congregational. <laughs> I love this church. And, and you know, you look at yesterday's photos and you look at today's photos, look at that. Other than adding on to the back on the side, it's still there. It's amazing, you know, how they've been able to preserve these buildings and make them look like they're They've been there a short period of time. I, 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 every time I look at these buildings, I, I kind of, I, I wondered how long it took them to build it and why that particular type. You know what I mean? It was 1836 that the, this church, the church was built. I'm sorry? 1836 was when the church was built. Really? Wow. Were you around then? <laughs> of course, now we're talking about the schools here, and we all know the entrance to that school up here, no? No. That's the bachelor's school on Peabody Street. With those big, tall, tall trees. Yep, and that, that uh, middle uh, picture, that is uh, the, uh, the side facing Route 62, so if you're at Ryers, you're looking across the street, that's what you're going to see. And there's actually, I think, steps or stairs or on that wall. Is that a wall or yeah, stairs? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it was the amphitheater. Yeah. Yeah. Now, right. is that tree, the one that's still there, that's over 300 years old, this particular one? Because I couldn't judge from the picture. No. And it looks oh, like no. it is. It's a maple tree. Well, this is what the entrance uh, to the back of school looks like yesterday. And this is today. If you really look at it, look at the middle, look at the top, yeah. the chimney, even the entrance, uh, the railings are slightly different, but it's still nice the job. same. You know, oh, they, yeah, look yeah, at the yeah. uh, window above the uh, door there, yeah. the archway there. It's, it's, it's still there. Yeah, I mean, it's still there. The people, well, was, was it, it for the, the playground, or was there a reason? No. Well, when they put the addition on, I don't think they really wanted to keep it. They were so cool, though. Yeah, take know, graduation really. picture every yeah. year. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Graduating yeah. class. Yeah. 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 And that's what it looks like yeah. today. Yeah. 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 It's pretty amazing, though. I mean, if you really look at it, that, that's actually beautiful, you know. Mm. Not that this isn't, but it's still, if you go back there. Yes. It's look at all the trees. Oh, yeah. How was it in the springtime? Was it really nice? Beautiful. Beautiful. That was a tree that was along this I get a walk. kick out of this. I always heard, when I was young, I used to walk in the snow 10 feet high. They were going to school by bus back then. <laughs> you didn't go back far enough. Apparently not. But what I get a kick out of is that they had eight school buses that we needed to carry the children. I know, but you had to live two miles away from the school to ride the bus. Well, I think it's still the same thing today, yes, isn't it? Yes, I know, but you walk two miles in the high snow. But look, at, we have, I, I don't think we have that many more buses today. I think we have maybe four or five that I count here, but that doesn't mean that they're not like in somebody's backyard or something parked there. But, I mean, the difference between those buses to our buses, like Cadillacs today, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here they are, full of snow. And they move those trucks, right? Mm -hmm. I got a kick out of this. I never knew that there was a doctor stationed at the schools. A dentist also? Oh, really? Yeah. When did that yeah. stop? 
Well, they would come to do checkups. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Why did they ever stop doing that? Too many kids? Too much money. <laughs> yeah, the school had a um, they they had a doctor who would do uh, I think annual physicals of the students, and then they had a uh, full part-time nurse. Uh, um, and the nurse uh, for many years was Mrs. Colleen. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love these photos, especially the uh, the band photos here. I mean, you had a, a teacher in a tie jacket. You know, it's just amazing how they dressed back then. Not that they don't dress pro appropriately today, but it's. I, I really look at these photos, and it was a, a different mindset back then. It's more relaxed today, I guess. Yeah, it's more relaxed. Yeah. And of course, you got the school committee here. Oh, yeah. And uh, let me see, uh, Daniel Shea, yep. 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 The Daniel Malcolm Shea Stevens, the Ruth Russell, yep. Vivian Eisenhower, yep. Secretary yep. Jay yep. Turner Hood, principal. Yeah. Jay Turner Hood is school. after whom the Hood School is named. Yep. 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 And Vivian Eisenhower was the first principal at the Jay Turner Hood School. Because before they built the J. Turner Hood, she was the principal at the batch. And he, J. Turner, J. T. as he was called, was the superintendent at the batch. And he governed all the schools. Well dressed, right? Compared to ours. I had to throw these photos in, you know. I like the guy with the shorts. And we all know what this building is. Oh, yeah. I, you know, that hasn't changed at all. <laughs> you know what's interesting, though? Look at, look at the photo, okay? And look at the windows, the steeple, all right? The doors. And look at it today. It hasn't changed that much. Look at how beautiful that building is. I mean, here it is. Okay, save it. Here it is yesterday. And look at it today. A little wider. You see much of a difference? No. They painted it. They painted it. That's it. I, you know, I did the ramp over there and maybe the, the front steps. But look at the windows. Look at the siding. And also the uh, phone lines, and I guess, and the power lines on yeah, the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did they have back then? Actually, there is a line over there. When the council on aging was first formed, they wanted to have their own logo. And they finally decided to use the window that's in the triangle. And if you, that was, that was their, they used that as their logo. And when you saw the friends, yeah. and the lady, um, Beverly, I forget, they, there's a memorial garden for her, Barbara. Uh, that's library. Now that's got history in town. Oh, yeah, the library. Yeah. Yeah. And I find it interesting that, you know, they still have, you know, the, the trustees and they still run it, you know, like they did back in you know, the early uh, years. I think and my mother is in there somewhere. Really? <laughs> yes. Uh, let me see, Mrs. Robert, uh, Mrs. Robert Parker. Yes, that's yeah. my mom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's on the left, right? Yeah. Yeah. Down here on the left. And Raymond Turner. Yes. Yeah. Milton yeah. Turner. And Chester Smith. Young. Yeah. And uh, Mrs. Chandler Eaton, and Mrs. Guy Crosby, and Miss uh, Elizabeth Batchelor. What were their duties? Is it the same thing as today, or was it different back then? Well, they, they actually got involved in actually, my mother, uh, who had been a primary school teacher, actually was involved in choosing some of the books for the library. And, uh, and so they were very, they were very, uh, it was very hands on. And they had, and at that time they also had a, uh, uh, our town librarian was Francis Foster, who was an early graduate of Brown University and then went to Simmons. 
and she was a very, very bright, knowledgeable lady. So they, they were a good team. They all, they all worked together. They picked out books. They actually uh, brought in some book author uh, evenings. And uh, they were very young. It was also an elected office. Really? It just wasn't a town appointed. You had, actually had to run and, uh, and run and vote it in. Uh, Tommy, is this Chandler Eaton? That's Chandler's father? Chandler Eaton, no, that, yes, that, yes, uh, yeah, his Chandler, mother was, uh, they, uh, was Ma uh, Mary and Chandler Eaton. Is J.T. Hood's sister. Yes. Yeah. yeah, because Chandler Eaton's son lives on Haverhill Street, and That's he right. is also a teacher. It was a whole family of teachers, but Chandler Eaton was yes. a local yokel. And, and Chandler <laughs> Eaton's father was Hubby Eaton, mm -hmm. And he and they uh, and he and his wife uh, had a boarding house, which was pretty much their clientele was exclusively teachers, uh, single teachers, and uh, and it was called the Eaton Inn, and that was just down the down the uh, slope there, uh, not far from the uh, Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Now Harriet Flint, uh, she was the founder of the library. Yes. Her, yeah, the, the town hall. Her her husband had made his money in the gold rush, and uh, they and they were quite prosperous. When she became a very wealthy widow, she decided uh, what was it, 1875, 1878, 72, to, 72, to present the town with a with a with a town building which had uh, town offices on the first floor, and above was a big assembly hall with a stage. So she donated the building. She donated. Was the she living in it at one time? No, no. She lived on uh, where the telephone company is. Um, they are on um, right at the corner of Central Street and uh, Park Street. That her house was approximately there. It's been long been torn down. It was a big Victorian house. And I get a kick out of it because you've got the story hour. Uh, you know, it, back then even day had the children in mind, and it was all about the kids back then, and, and, and these folks really worked hard. The, uh, Mrs. Howard Foster was the librarian at the time. Yeah. yeah Francis Foster. What, 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 yes. Francis Foster. Well, the library was where, um, was it the tavern? Yes, the tavern. Tavern. The tavern is. Tavern. Well, before oh, that, yes. it was in the other corner opposite the police station mm -hmm. here in the, in town hall. Right. Right, but, and then the man, on the right, up on the top, is Mr. Weeks, right? Is that what it says? Yeah. Uh, yep. Oh. Okay, because the library was named after him, yep. the yep. Weeks library. Memorial Library, yep. because right. the people who owned the library, it had been a private home, and very wealthy lady, and that's where the Rufus Porter mural is, and she had a ballroom, and, you know, it was big time. Anyway. She passed away, and there was nobody in the family, and so the town took over the property because of eminent domain and non-payment of taxes. <coughs> so Mr. Weeks' mother passed away. She lived in Reading. He lived in North Reading. And so he, in memory of his mother, he donated $500 to Reading to the church in Reading, and he donated $500 to North Reading. So they said, well, Mr. Weeks, um, because you've donated this amount of money, we can now pay the taxes off, and that building can be used for a library because we really need it. So we will name it the Weeks Memorial <laughs> Library. $500. So he said, okay. And he lived on Winter Street. And when you go into Winter Street, the second big house has a barn attached. That's where he lived. But his business was in Boston. And he traveled to Boston every day to attend to his business. And um, he would stop in um, Stoneham, and he would buy Evening in Paris for the madams in his business. <laughs> <laughs> and so, anyway, 
That's Mr. Weeks. <laughs> now, why did they change the name to the front library? Well, when, no, wait a minute. When they outgrew this library, they said, well, the library, it was somehow or other written in the will or whatever, the deed, each once a month is named in Tony's mother because that was, there was money left for the historical society, so they named that room for her, the Margaret Parker room. And anyway, there's all kinds of history at the Damon Tavern. And here it is. You know, I saw a few pictures, and it hasn't really changed that much. It's no. still basically the same. And that's a flint, what's called a flint building. And I was looking at a paper one day, and they used to have pictures, old pictures. And you had to determine where this picture was. And I said, oh, I said, that's, uh, that's the library in North Reading. But it wasn't. And the following week, when they gave you the correct answer, identical building was in Newburyport. Oh. Identical. Oh. Wow. They stole our design. Yeah. <laughs> now, again, old houses back then. They were new, but they called them old. Yeah. You know? And I, I'm fascinated by you know, some of these in particular. Uh, this one here, they had uh, the Darren Amos Upton House. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. Now, where is this building again? Yeah. Is it still around? The well, Upton House? The Amos Upton, is, is that up on Upton Ave, Tommy? Uh, I can't quite say it from here. I can't. The top left. Yeah, and I. I um, it's a little too far I tried looking for some of these buildings to get it before and after, and I just, you know, couldn't do it. Couldn't find it. Didn't have enough time. Well, the Upton Farm, they were, um, they were people who owned the farm. They owned the farm. They owned the farm. They owned the farm. They were pig farmers, and they sold uh, pork wholesale. And they sold the farmers. And they also sold ice. Yeah, you know, what's coming up, I find, we had a lot of different uh, businesses in town. Uh, but before we get to that, this is the old defense and sanitarium. Yeah. Now, that's the Berry building, am I correct? Yeah. The J.T. Berry? Yeah. John T. Berry, yeah. This goes back to 1926, so that's always been in North Carolina. Well, it started off as a TV sanatorium for children because North Reading was deemed to have the purest air in Massachusetts. Really? Yeah. North Reading and Stoughton. And anyway, they chose to build a sanatorium. So the sanatorium went way back in the woods because the children slept all outside. They slept on the porch. They were undercover, but they were down companies and whatever. But in order to help their lungs heal, they slept outside. And, you know, if the Commonwealth built something, they built it to last. And it was beautiful. I worked at John T. Berry, and the residents from John T. Berry lived in one of the houses, and the mahogany staircase and the fireplaces. It was just beautiful. The but they also were. had they also had smaller buildings made of brick. Am I correct? Yeah. They yeah. did. Well, they were made of wood because the plan was that the staff would live on the grounds so that nobody would call in sick. Nobody said, I can't get to work. <laughs> they were already on the They were smart back then. <laughs> so cool. In other words, no excuses. Right. Well, that's what it looks like. That's the property now. And yeah. as everybody knows, uh, over 55 uh, housing yeah. 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 coming up. I mean, that's a big piece of property. And now, where um, Edgewood is, is that, was that also part of uh, yeah. Yeah. That's also, yeah. 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 Wow. all the same thing? Yeah, because you had you had a school. They had a regular schoolhouse, and they've used that schoolhouse for movies. I mean, the kids would come, they play, you know, outside. But when it was time to shoot the movie, then the kids had to attend to business. But the residents lived there. 
in those yeah. in those and those yeah. residents that were severely disturbed, you know, were kept in an isolation like yep. so yeah. that they wouldn't do harm yeah. to themselves yeah. or to well, others. But they were very well taken care of. That's why I worked there. Everybody knows that North Reading had a train, couple of train stations. Mm -hmm. Why did they ever get rid of them? I, I mean, I, it's, it's kind of surprising because this railroad came from Salem, Mass, and it went up to Lowell. Yeah. And because of the mills up in Lowell, and at the other end they had the docks and you know the ships coming in, so people could go back and forth. Why did they get rid of them? Short sighted. Yeah. Yeah, they this? they, they stopped train service at to North Reading, a passenger service about 1940-41. And I think they continued freight service for a while, but then they then they then they discontinued that. And, and unfortunately. Of course the, the I know we had everything. We had the infrastructure the, to continue and then disappear. Right. This is one it's a puzzle to me. It's like, why would they get rid of something that would be very useful going forward? It's a bike path. It didn't make sense to me. Yeah. But this one here was on uh, railroad. Uh, we were uh, Haver Street. That one was a Haver Street station. Yeah. And I think they have one of the auto shops. Still, the building does, part of the building still survives as part of the auto shop. Okay. And and then the town barn that you showed earlier, yeah. that was a maintenance building because the railroad track was right in back of it. And that was a large maintenance building for the railroad. When the railroad ceased, the, the town acquired that and used that as a town barn. Okay. But that's what it looked like back then. It was beautiful. Al, I've got a little story about that. Um, a couple of years ago, a friend from North Reading, Andy Graham, <coughs> invited me to go yeah, on a yeah. hike in North Reading. And I went with him, we drove down 62, turned right on Park Street, where it diverges. And in a neighborhood, we went to a friend's home, went behind his yard, and about 200 yards from Elm Street 62 was a straight, beautiful hike two miles into, into uh, I guess, Linfield. Yep. Or, yep. Down to, and, down to BB right Kennel. Awesome. And it, um, there was wildlife there, pools, ponds, yep. and, yep. and the railroad track is a bed of nice leaves and you can walk in like a nature walk. Mm. Yep. So that's still and it's still there. there. There's still uh, the remnants of, uh, I believe, uh, the tracks in various places, not too many. I don't think there's but tracks. But here's the line. Well, it was when we were a couple of years ago. Piece going of right track. through North Reading. And this is actually a Google uh, map, and if you look at it, it, there was a station here, I believe a chestnut, and the other one, I believe, was uh, Havel over here. And it went right across. And if you, if you follow, actually, if you go to Google Map, it actually still shows the line for the old railroad track. Going from Salem to all the towns up to uh, Lowell. Again, why would they get rid of them? something as important as that going forward. I was told it had to do with the mills in Lowell having less demand for right. shipping mm -hmm. goods. Yeah. We had streetcars. What happened to the streetcars? Same place as the trains. And again, but why? I mean, it doesn't make sense. You know, I mean, the, the only thing that was going to happen to this town was going to grow, and the need was going to be even greater. And yet, somebody didn't have a vision to keep those things. Well, the the of course the rise of the automobile yeah. outstripped the. <laughs> but they still have them in Boston. Oh, I know, but, <laughs> but it was but it was and and the and with the um, interurban system, you could go you could practically go anywhere by streetcar. And this really fascinates me. They had tours of not vetting. <laughs> J. B. McLean tours in his early Overland. Tours? <laughs> <laughs> what did they see? <laughs> Trees? Houses? <laughs> yeah, beautiful houses, correct? But there's also, uh, and I'm sure that it was part of the tour, uh, uh, this I found interesting. Arthur B. Brewitt driving the U.S. mail and passenger coach in 1892 in front of the Reading Depot. So again, you 
you said that this was changed because they were getting sick and tired of going back and forth. But they used to do the uh, mail trip and this twice a day, from uh, what it says. Wow. You know. But again, why make the changes? You know, I mean, why? You know, I don't know. Just weird. But I guess it's called progress. Uh, but the tours, I guess, also included uh, different companies that the town had, and we're going to come up to that in a second. I love these photos here, and I know they're kind of hard to see, but every, you know, they, these are floats. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, when they had a parade, I guess, yeah, they yeah. decorated their floats. Right. Get them now. They're not as extensive as they were then. The chamber right. company, we didn't have a chamber. The board of... The board of Trade. Board of Trades had a float, and... Um, was there competition between them, or was no, it... No, uh, it's just that, you know, it, it just got it, it, like anything else, it got to be the same people doing I, the same... Well, I think they offered the prizes for the best decorated float or something. Uh, I mean, if you, I, you know, you, if you get a chance before you leave, you know, I have the book here. Uh, great work, I mean, you really use the imagination, and I mean, great, great creativity. Well, you know, uh, you said what happened, did they have any foresight? However, North Reading was farm country. That's correct. And we had nice farms, apple orchards all over the place. And at one time, and Phillips Academy in Andover, the trustees came to North Reading and they were looking to build Phillips Academy in North Reading. Um, and the farmers said, no, no, we can't allow that. Those boys are going to steal our apples. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, you know, That's I mean, great. they were looking out for themselves, and, you know, they didn't want anybody taking their apples because that was their bread and butter, and they worked hard. So trustees said, okay, see you later, and they went to Andover. I love these uh, uh, pictures here, and it's a page of... Um, you know, people around town and their ages. Uh, so I guess it was their elders. Yeah. Um, and I, I, this one here with the uh, with the cows, I guess uh, they called them the Ulster of farmer years, former years. Mr. Uh, I can't read that. Alanders, Allison, Upton. Mr. Upton? Yeah, well, the Uptons, as I said, had a big farm, Upton Farm. Yep. And uh, they owned a lot of, because they had their gardens all over. And I mean, that was a piggery. Not a piggery, it was a, a pig farm, that's what it was. <laughs> but they would uh, slaughter them up there. And they sold ice. This young lady lived till she was 93. This gentleman here, Charles Tupper Smith, 101. Yes, he, he was the he was a recipient of uh, the Boston Post cane, and the and the it was a gold headed cane that was presented to whoever was the uh, on an annual basis to whoever was the oldest citizen of the town. And he was the oldest. And one he was he, would, he was the father of the uh, of the church sexton at uh, the Congregational Church, Charles Smith. Do we know who the oldest is in town? Yes, yes we do. Yes. <coughs> that would who would that be? Claire Picciuto. Yeah. She's 101. She wow. is still very active. She comes to the senior center when she can every Wednesday uh, to play bingo. And a year ago, what 100 years, she earned her North Reading High School diploma. Wow. And was awarded a 2016 North Reading High School graduate because she never had the opportunity to graduate. Graduate. Awesome. Yeah. Now, that's history. That is, uh, that's awesome. Now we talk about the old library. Now that's where they held the uh, graduation uh, ceremonies at the old library also. Look at how beautiful that looks. Whatever happened, is that section is still not, is it still there or? Are you, are you talking about in the current library? Well, wherever this picture is. Oh. This was the uh, Memorial Hall at ABC Graduation okay. Services, 1895. No. Uh, note stage, and I can't read the other one. When the architect um, looked at the interior of that building to renovate it as a library, he came upon the stage. And that's how we were able to have four stories in the mezzanine in the second floor. Really? 
I mean, it's beautiful. And you know, you talk about farms, you know, they were, we were loaded with them, but we also were loaded with, you know, different types of factories, you know, from what I understand too, and that's coming up. I love the uh, operators on the phone before they got rid of them. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that, that was in a, um, the uh, private house on um, Park right on Park Street. It was the uh, and, it, and it was uh, kind of a double duty. The house was um, of the home of the fire chief, a uh, chief Comron, and his wife Flossie was head operator. Really? And in 19, I think it was 1957, North Reading made the big switch. We switched from crank phones to dial phones. Uh -huh. You know, I'm looking at the photo and I'm thinking to myself, what are you doing? You know, what are they thinking of? You know, they're going to lose their job at the end of the day. You know, I mean, that was their job for how long? And then to lose it, the technology, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. That, that's Martin's Pond today when it snows. And if you look at the top now, that's Martin's Pond. Now, there was a store. Right at Burroughs Road and yep. at the intersection? Yep. Well, that was what they saw in the back of that particular yep. store. Yep. What kind of a store was it? It was a, um, there was, on Burroughs Road, there was a, uh, there was a picture was in the calendar a couple of years ago, yep. 2015, I think, mm -hmm. and it was a grocery store. Yep. And uh, uh, it was an Italian name, I forget, but the man, you know, sold groceries and uh, whatever the people needed at the pond because then they'd have to come over on the other side of town because okay. we didn't have stock and shop and market basket, so they'd have to go to Jones Brothers, you know, or they'd go to Reading. Interesting. But that's what it looks like today, and I, it, it's not behind it, but it's almost near where that uh, store was. Now, you saw a picture of a fallen tree. Well, we do have fallen trees even today. Mm -hmm. uh, we can go fly a drone and get the trees from the top. <laughs> and that's over on another road uh, this past, uh, uh, let me see, that, that bad uh, windstorm that we had mm -hmm. last year, late last year. Businesses in town. There was so many of them gas stations, uh, you had uh, uh, restaurants, uh, you had uh, Howard John's. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Howard John's is not, uh, not, not here, but what, is, what was the topper? But the topper is now Big Dog. Okay. And uh, the, the topper belonged to a couple, Bill and Eileen Dow. And they lived upstairs, and but it had a nice stone fireplace. Oh, and was that and the fire at the time, when before I got married, my husband to be and I, uh, he lived in Reading, and I lived in Boston. I was going to school in Boston, and when we came to, when I would come to Reading, we'd have to come to North Reading because Reading was dry. <laughs> uh, so we would go to the topper and uh, and the, you know everybody knew everybody the waitress was there Bill and Eileen would come down after a while and, and they I don't know if they they used to have live shows you know and you could have a nice dinner we have a so it was you know that was it well I mean I'm fascinated now they also had a uh, Gloria, did they call that the fireside too? Wasn't that the fireside at one time? I think it was later. Yeah. It was later? No, the fireside was down. The fireside is where McDonald's was. Oh. No. Oh. no. The fireside was there. Yeah. McDonald's was the um, Stardust Lounge. The Stardust. The Stardust. Yeah, yeah. 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 Stardust. I don't know where that is. I don't know where that is. I don't know where that is. That was the Maverick. That was the Maverick. A lot of the towns. Lot of the towns. Yeah, we, had, we had all the gas stations and all the bars. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody also, came to know. Also, the breakfast places. There was a lot of you know, those little, uh, uh, what do you call it? The little uh, uh, railroad carts, I guess. Diner? They turned into diners. Yeah, diners. Enjoy ice cream. Uh, 
this has not changed that much. And that's the, uh, oh. anybody know what that is? And that's what it looked like, and that's what it looked like today. I mean, look, look at it. It hasn't changed that much. It's still the same location. Still yeah. 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 And Temple Royal, okay? I mean, look at it yesterday and look at it today. It still has the two garages on the other side. I mean, it's, it's nicely preserved. And uh, Chuck Gucci did. Look at what it is today. I know. Job lost. What movie? Any good memories from the driving? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can you see what movie was it on, Sorry? Can you see what movie was on the drive in my key? What was it? What was the movie, Al? What was the movie? I can't read from here. Can you see? Wind, yeah. Father Back and you are. <laughs> Academy Award winner Shirley Root in something little break. Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Good picture. Yeah. <laughs> Really? I never saw any of that there. But look at the look at the diners. Okay, I, I'm fascinated. And also car dealerships. I mean, how many car dealerships does this town have? It's amazing. And several. And yet, if I remember correctly, there was one that was wanted to come into town where Heffern's buildings are now, and it was rejected by the selectmen. Anybody remember that incident? Yeah, because enough is enough. <laughs> <laughs> but they had so many back then. Yeah. Uh, the DMS garage sold Studebakers. Uh, Monroe Oil um, for a while had a Hillman Minx uh, dealership uh, for the little British uh, for the little British car, yeah. and there was a Jeep dealership out on uh, Main Street where Bronco Oil is. No, oh, yes, right. That was there for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yes. yep. yep. Horseshoe Club. Yeah. Oh, my God. Any memories from that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we hear a couple? No. <laughs> well, of course, we all know what it looks like today. Yeah, before it was the Horseshoe Club. 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 Horseshoe Lee. Okay. And he had a son and a daughter, and the son I told was a handsome dude, but he was a teetotaler, and uh, the father said I can't give him the business because, you know, he's going to run it to the ground. He won't allow it. He'll shut off the people. So he called Veronica and asked her if she and her husband would be interested, and. Pat, the father, was a bus driver in Manhattan. And so they came, and they looked it over, and they said yes. And Veronica said, where will we live? Oh, yeah. He said, right here, the house right next to the shoe. Their home was there. So she did, and she had Patrick at the time. But all the other children were born in North Reading. Now that's going to be a hundred years old pretty soon, isn't it? Next well, year or so? Just turned oh, yeah. 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 ninety when she turned ninety. Oh, Veronica. Okay. okay, so oh. it's ninety years old, including the time that they didn't own it. No, but the family-owned business is what it says. Okay. A ninety-year family-owned business. Okay, so how long has it really technically been a building? Right. The restaurant. Well, ninety years ago. <laughs> yeah. So in other words. Building wasn't something else. Well, in other words, are they counting? When did the, the lease take over? The lease. 90 years ago? No, it was less than that. Let me see. Patrick is uh, 62, maybe. So I'm going to say, I don't know how long before that. You'd have to ask Okay, him. but it's 90 years old. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> okay. Come on. And again, you know. What happened to these buildings? What happened to these, uh, you know, uh, businesses? Well, a lot of them saw uh, were destroyed by fire. Yeah, uh, Lavaggi's burned down. Oh yeah, Lavaggi's. Lavaggi's was a beautiful restaurant, 
and in Lavagis, there was a rufous board of Ural there also. And then uh, that, was, that was the family you know, died off, and uh, whoever bought it turned it into, you know, continued to have it as a restaurant. But then it had a buyer, and they rebuilt it. And then next to it, no. And then when it went away, finally, they decided they were going to rebuild. It was the little Now, if you notice, Kitty's restaurant down at the bottom there, it's a little shack. I mean, that started from a little shack. What was their specialty back then? Was it seafood or something? What is the name of the house? It's a, it's just uh, Kitty's. Uh, yeah. It was pizza. Pizza. Kitty's. I think it was a bar. Lunch. Yeah. What was it? Lunch. Kitty's lunch. Oh, Kitty. Well, Kitty's is Kitty's. Right, but it started out kind of as a lunch wagon. Just a little, you know, quite a small wagon. lunch wagon. Small. If you yeah, wanted to seafood, you went to, to, you went to Sailor Tom's and Rennie. Yeah. yeah. And we all know what this place is. If you look at uh, Ma Murphy's, it's, uh, it used to be the gateway. It's in the 50s. Yeah. Court. The wayside. Okay. Well, it says gateway. Yeah, gateway. Is it on Main Street? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, yep. it's the wayside in. But it says gateway. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, it was the gateway to North Reading. Isn't it next to the stop and shop? Yes, yeah, because yeah, that was a Chinese restaurant. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And the, the apartments is behind North Shore Printing. Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh. Yep. And of course, we, you know, Coswell's, yep. that's yeah. been around for years oh, and years and years and hasn't changed. I mean, that. Just the know, addition. They put very the little addition has changed from this building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, Kitty's now. And look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I miss summer. <laughs> and again, one of the things I, I, I've uh, been kind of in, you know, interested in, in finding out a little bit more is Abbott Shoe. What happened to Abbott Shoe? They used to be down on Park Street. Yeah. 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 They used to be down on Park Street. They used to be on Washington Street. Where Street. They were on Bow Street. Okay, Bow Street. They were on Bow Street. That's when he started, was right. Bow Street. Interesting. Right. Now, uh, Hornet's Nest, if you look at the uh, building in the middle there, uh, they'll go down. That you know, hasn't really changed except for the fire. Actually, until the, the fire, fire it, it was it still looked mm -hmm. like it was back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. okay. Remember the fire mm -hmm. that we had, what, five, ten years ago? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Our post office hasn't changed much, has it? No. 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 Except its location. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now here, here's the, um, is that the original building for uh, Abbott Street? Yeah. Street? Yeah. Uh, that's Bow Street? No. No, that was, no, on, that was, that was on Washington Street where um, uh, Mike's uh, Pizza yeah. is, yeah. Mike's yeah. Pizza and the whole uh, strip strip mall. Strip strip that mall big building? So yeah. it was it a was factory. factory. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Bay factory. factory. The shoe factory. And then what it happened went to, to it? Street? Street? Well, basically, they bought the name yeah. and became a shoe outlet. Right. Oh. And they, but the uh, but originally, Abbott Shoe was a shoe manufacturing. Oh. In town. Oh. Okay. Right here. Yeah. So all the what shoes were made in Yeah. The building The building It was torn down. And that's where they were? It was torn down. Yeah, yeah. that's where they were. My mother used to work there. She used to do piece work. While we were in school, Ma would go there and just do a hundred slippers and make enough money to be quite and a just messy go home. Store. Yeah, yeah, it was the store. And of course, this is all that's left. Yeah. 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 Is this the same family, or is it yeah. no? Yeah. No. 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 The fellow that runs it now is a son-in-law to Mel Ross that ran it yeah. on Mel yeah. Street, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he brought the shoes yeah. in. Yeah, but you know, yeah. 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 Yeah.
And the old store is still there in the back. Yeah. 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 This is another question I had, and it also puzzles me. Back then, we had McIntyre bus lines. What ever happened to them? I mean, why did they get rid of them? Again, we need a bus line in this town, don't we? I mean, the small, small companies just couldn't compete, just like uh, Skinner's, Skinner's Taxi. Taxi was there, that yeah. came to an end when Mrs. Skinner passed away in her 90s. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Bus people so there used to us. be the bus that came and from And I think that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay. I had fun, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.